Each and every one of us has an unlimited inner wellspring of spiritual power. You have the ability to transform, create, and heal anything upon which you set your heart and mind. Join me, Sarah Hall, as we learn how to uplift all aspects of your life through spiritual empowerment. Enjoy weekly guided meditations, spiritual discussions on a multitude of topics, and a chance to call in to receive channeled messages from the angels on your spiritual journey. I'm Sarah Hall, and this is Through the Eyes of the Angels. Hi guys, thank you so much for tuning in to our show today. So glad that you're here. And I always so look forward to getting to hang out with you live on the radio each month. Today's discussion is really going to be fun because we are going to delve into one of the most mysterious and fascinating of topics in spirituality. Today we're talking about past lives. So when we think about past lives, we naturally will lean to contemplate the idea that we are all ageless, infinite souls. And we truly are. We are ancient, endless, infinite beings on an incredible journey. Your soul has most likely taken human birth many times in order to have experiences through which it will awaken out of the illusion of separateness and do so not only for you as the individual you seem to be, but also for the collective whole of humanity and spirit to which we all belong. A Buddhist sage was once asked, how long have we been on this journey? And then the sage replied, imagine a mountain three miles wide, three miles high, and three miles long. Once every hundred years, a bird flies over the mountain holding a silk scarf in its beak, which it brushes across the surface of the mountain. The time it would take for the scarf to wear down the mountain is how long we've been doing this. So the soul's very nature is constant expansion. It is constantly cycling through new frontiers of growth, fueled by an immense passion to adventurously experience everything, all that there is in existence. I really love the words of the Sufist poet Rumi, in which he gives a little nod to reincarnation in saying, I died as mineral and became plant. I died as plant and rose to animal. I died as animal, and I was man. Why should I fear? When was I less by dying? And if you look at cultures and religions all over the world throughout history, there are references to the idea of living many lives. And I truly believe that this is part of the soul's natural knowingness that we live beyond just this lifetime. Our birth and our death are simple doorways from one part of the soul's infinite journey into the next. At a spiritual level, you have the ability to sense and even explore the greater arc of your soul's journey, which is what we're going to talk a little bit about today. Exploring our past lives, I believe, is a valuable thing because it can result in deep healing through which we get to know and understand ourselves better, both emotionally and spiritually, and through which we have the opportunity to step into our power as co-creators of this life. Oftentimes, some of the biggest fears, challenges, or seeming blockages that we face in life can be rooted in karmic past life experiences. To heal these things is to experience truly a dramatic release and sense of freedom that very powerfully helps you to return to your 
original, God-given, innocent state of oneness with the divine, in which we have an unending supply of well-being and unconditional love. To understand the way that past life healing works a little more deeply, the angels have given the message that it can be helpful to first understand that time is not progressing in the linear fashion that we seem to perceive. From a human perspective, our current consciousness processes time as linear. We mentally actually approach and express many things in a linear fashion, for example, including language and numerical values and that sort of thing. According to the angels, the linear mode of thought does serve its purpose, but in many ways, we are able to transcend it and see reality from a heightened perspective. So let's take a moment to try on the angel's perspective of time just to experiment. Angels and other higher heavenly beings are not limited by time or space. In truth, time is a phenomenon we experience as a result of separation, separation consciousness. Without seeming separation from the oneness, from one another, from source, there is no need for time. And when you transcend your body and go into the oneness, perhaps through meditation, astral travel, or death, you step outside of time. Now, the angels and other higher beings can navigate and understand our experience of time and simultaneously stand outside of time, seeing it from the bird's eye view, so to speak. From their perspective, all time in truth is happening at once. Pretty exciting. So what we are identifying then as past lives from our linear perspective, in truth, are more like simultaneous lives or parallel lives you can think of. Now let's really go down the rabbit hole <laughs> and get into some metaphysics here. Imagine, if you will, a giant sphere of energy. And let's let it represent the dimension of time, the place in which time is experienced. The sphere contains an enormous, intricate, spiraling fractal. And you can just visualize that. Now place yourself upon any single spot in the spiral. Imagine yourself riding through the cyclical patterns it makes. Let's let these cyclical patterns represent the coming and going of seasons and years. Because all things in our Earth's dimension, after all, spin in cycles as the Earth orbits in a spinning circular fashion. Now, imagine that you're looking at the curves of the spiral that you're sitting on that move just above you and below you. You are part of them as this ride that you're on is moving as a whole. Let these parallel points on the spiral that you're looking at above you and below you represent different lifetimes of yours. Now, if you were to do something that made a very strong impact, something that perhaps sent waves of new energy and experience into the spiral, then it wouldn't just affect the point at which you now seem to be riding on the spiral. That wave of energy, if it were strong enough, would be able to flow and spread through the spiral and affect those parallel lives. So when you do past life healing, you're making an alteration in the programming of how your experiences tend to flow. Karma works in cycles. If you put a spiritual or mental force into action, it will move along through your life's experiences and create a pattern through which you might notice the same karmic issues showing up in response to that original mental, emotional, or spiritual karmic force that you set into motion. We're then reliving that karmic cycle or experience in a similar fashion until we apply a different force or action to it. So let's say somebody has had, we'll say, a really negative experience in romantic relationships, for example, and they can't seem to help but to maybe repeatedly attract the same scenario of mistrust or abandonment over and over again. When we approach healing and changing that from a spiritual standpoint, 
most often we want to pull the weed right out from the roots. So we'll look for where that issue started. Now, let's say in this example that the root of this issue was in a situation of traumatic relationship abandonment in a previous lifetime that the issue boils right down to um, perhaps there's one strong resonating belief rooted in it. Let's say in a fear or a lack of forgiveness over that issue from that lifetime. That person can forgive and heal that trauma from any point in the karmic cycle it has showed up for them. They can heal it from the perspective of, let's say, the girlfriend who cheated on them and left them in this lifetime, or they can heal it from the perspective of the past life in which they were, let's say, abandoned by someone in maybe a war or a famine. Wherever you apply the healing and the forgiveness to the root belief in the issue, you'll see marvelous changes resulting in an alteration of the flow of karma or spiritual forces through your life. You'll feel more free, uplifted. And something I have noticed is that when we're able to consciously apply that healing to the original experience that sparked the pattern, the healing flows right through one's life with incredible speed and thoroughness, which is why doing past life work can be so incredibly helpful in healing and lightening our hearts in this lifetime. Now, how do we heal past life experiences? In my experience, I have learned that for most of us, simply reconfronting our past life experiences is enough to spark a catharsis that will trigger a complete awakening and healing release from the past issue. When you reconfront or momentarily remember and relive the experience, you get the chance to purge out negative emotions and recognize that you are now safe and well. And by the way, we do experience a complete healing of fear or negativity when we die, when we go home to God. All of us do. It is simply that when we pick up where we left off and kind of go back into a human experience, it triggers all the old ingrained memories, feelings, or vulnerabilities we've come to associate with being human. Now, your third eye plays a role in this and is also like a movie projector through which we can re-explore past life experiences. The third eye is sort of like a camera that constantly is filming each and every moment and experience in your life. The third eye has the ability to access anything it has recorded, whether it was from this lifetime or from one past. You can do this through a past life regression, past life readings, or some people will even naturally just remember past life experiences. And you may actually have already felt a connection to one of your past lives. Let's see if you have, just for a moment, let's think back. And I want you to think of a time in your life when you met someone and suddenly felt a strong sense of familiarity, knowingness, or instant chemistry that just seemed to burst with a sense of meaning. Have you ever had an experience like that? Or perhaps you can think back to a moment in which you felt instant deep interest in a location in the world, in a particular culture, or in a part of history. Perhaps you've been to a location that just immediately gave you a sense of familiarity, as if the very air were tingling mysteriously, the energy just kind of bursting with a feeling of potential with emotion, or even evoked a kind of dreaminess or otherworldly feeling. This is also a feeling that can be invoked by a piece of art, a story, or an artifact. And these feelings you're getting are the way that your consciousness remembers significant past life experiences. I can't tell you how many times in my work I've done a past life reading or regression with someone where afterwards they say, oh my gosh, it was so amazing that the past life was in ancient Egypt or 
we'll say Imperial Russia or ancient China. I've always had such a fascination with that place. People say it all the time. And it's again, it's because you've been picking up on this. You've already felt that memory in your consciousness. Another wonderful benefit of doing past life work is recalling moments of great inner strength, talent, aptitude, or highly developed spiritual gifts so that you can kind of draw them into this life and benefit from the knowledge that you've accumulated and stored in your spiritual memories. Or perhaps even to simply recall a moment of pure, raw innocence and unconditional trust in life and therefore in God. That's another benefit of traveling through the arc of your memories and your timeline. We all kind of came from that per- that perfect innocence after all, and we are all returning to it. I would say that the highest function and purpose of past life work in truth is to serve our return to oneness. According to The Course in Miracles, forgiveness is the true key to happiness. It is through forgiving the world that we enable ourselves to see reality as it truly is and allow ourselves to experience oneness with the divine. Past life's healings, they certainly do help us in in achieving this or connecting with this. I really, really feel. Now, The angel that I always suggest to call on if you would like to learn about your past lives is Archangel Raziel. Archangel Raziel is the angel of esoteric knowledge and the keeper of the Book of Akashic Records. The Akashic Records symbolize the collection of all knowledge and include um, our being able to access any of the previous incarnations that we've had, our soulmate contracts, our life purpose, and so forth. So if you're interested in doing past life work, I highly suggest doing it with the help of the angelic guides. Archangel Raziel is incredibly wise and loving and knows how to perfectly perfectly curate and guide which past life memories you would benefit from learning about the most. The angels can also be a great support system through any of the strong emotions that arise as you heal. I truly suggest easing in gently when doing past life work um, and to begin by setting the intention with your guides and angels to learn more about it and to purify the intention by asking that whatever needs to arise does so for your highest spiritual good. Then invite Raziel to guide you and simply see what kinds of feelings begin to arise during things like your meditations or even your dreams while you're asleep at night. If you feel guided to take uh, this work even further, ask your angels and they will help you to find a healer who can lead you through a regression or give you a past life reading. And don't worry, when you invite the angels to guide you through healing work like this, you'll never take on more than you're capable of healing. And they are always very gentle, loving guides. One other helpful little thing that I have come to know in working with past life regressions is that oftentimes people have made strong packs promises or vows in previous incarnations and sometimes even worded the vow or felt the vow that they made um, in the context of saying, I will do this forever. I will do this till the end of time. Every once in a while, there's somebody who's taken, let's say, a, a vow of poverty, chastity, and obedience who simply needs to go back into that lifetime and sort of undo that vow and release it and say, I'm done with that part of what I was learning and just release the grip that they're, they had kind of emotionally or spiritually on those sorts of things. Because a lot of those same people are experiencing perhaps the poverty, the chastity or the obedience in the present lifetime. Um, so past life healing is incredible because it's like an instant lift when you go back and access the moment where you made that promise and then shift it. Now, today, I thought that it would be a really fun, wonderful thing to do if we connected together with the angels in a guided meditation to just ever so gently 
open the door to any past life memories, any patterns, lessons, or archetypes that need to come through that might be helpful for us in our lives now. So we are going to connect together for a guided meditation now. And uh, in order to do so, if you're able, simply get nice and comfortable. And if you're in an environment where you can do it, you can go ahead and close your eyes for this, giving yourself a nice experience of your inner world. And then just begin to take in a few nice, long and deep healing breaths, allowing your body to deeply relax, allowing the heartbeat to steady into a slow, receptive rhythm, allowing the mind to become very, very still. As you continue to breathe, notice that there is a beautiful angel standing before you who channels a bright rainbow colored light all around you. This is the Archangel Raziel. Simply breathe this rainbow colored light in allowing it to fuse with every cell in your body, flowing deep in to the tiniest micro particles that make up your being. Notice as that rainbow light dissolves away any old heaviness and leaves behind a beautiful feeling of relaxation, lifted energy, even allowing you to notice a slightly higher vibration humming and resonating through the realms of your mind and your spirit. As you continue to breathe this beautiful light in, notice that it is clearly and easily flowing in through the center of your forehead at your third eye chakra. With your next deep breath, allow your third eye to bloom open. Good. Attuning to this beautiful light, uplifting you energetically. Notice that light flowing right through the center of your forehead and into the head, moving through the third eye's optic nerve, charging and igniting all of your psychic spiritual senses. Allow this light to create energetic light connections throughout your consciousness, creating a beautiful bridge from the present lifetime, your surface consciousness, all the way into the deep psyche, into the eternal memories of your soul. Beautiful. With your next deep breath, feel that light flowing all the way now to the back of your head, lighting up an inner screen in your mind a screen upon which you have the ability to see visions, to receive spiritual knowledge. Notice that the deeper you breathe, the more light seems to resound through this inner plane, the easier it is 
to sense the tiniest fluctuations in energy in this state of awareness. Archangel Raziel is showing us that he is now placing his hand right over your third eye. As you sense this, allow the third eye to shift and uplift you, giving you visions. of the spirit world. As these visions begin to flicker, notice that there is a beautiful door made out of white light that is just sitting before you. Archangel Raziel is now opening that door for you. And he's inviting you to just ever so gently step through and gaze at what's on the other side. Raziel has led you towards one single memory, symbol, image, or feeling that can benefit you today in learning about your past lives. As you breathe, simply take this experience in. Through this experience, allow Archangel Raziel to stand just behind you, channeling his light and guidance all around you as if there is a safe cocoon spreading all around your being. Allow Raziel to ever so gently carry you lifting you back through the doorway and then seeing as once again he places his hand over your third eye this time channeling healing light just giving you a moment to assimilate whatever little thought little memory came to the surface today Trust the message you received and trust that the lesson you are meant to learn through this memory, through this connection will continue to unfold on your path. With your next deep breath, we're now going to gaze into Archangel Raziel's eyes and make a close spiritual connection with him as your guide. Breathing deeply, simply think the thought or hold the intention. Archangel Raziel, thank you for being a guide to me on my spiritual path towards healing and towards oneness. Please guide me towards whichever past life experiences or lessons I might benefit from most on my spiritual path. Raziel shows us that he's taking your hands, filling you with light, and taking his place beside you as a strong guide of yours going into the future. Now he is just leading you right back into the present moment 
With your next deep breath, feel all of your energy, all of your presence flowing right back in through the top of your head at your crown chakra and through the center of your forehead at your third eye chakra. Breathe in your presence, feeling more awake and enlivened. Feel your energy flowing all the way down your spine as you integrate some of that rainbow light and the messages from your past life experiences right down your spine. And let them flow all the way down the legs, all the way down through the feet and going into your connection with the earth. Beautiful. With your next deep breath, pull your energy into your heart. And with your next exhale, you can gently open your eyes, feeling the presence of the world around you, right back in the present moment. Beautiful. Thank you so much for joining me in that just a little toe dip in the water to start to feel out what it's like to project into these experiences and to get a tiny little taste of what sort of lessons, memories, or experiences are in store for you. Very, very beautiful. One thing that I want to just sort of add with regard to past life healing Because if you are one of those people that does feel drawn to do this, you may find that you'll have past life regressions that you'll attract on your path later in life, perhaps even soon, is that the emotional response triggered by past life memories is one of the most common feelings that you will get. Sometimes people will naturally and easily feel very elated or perhaps even relive some of the traumatic or difficult emotions connected to their experiences to grieve. You are allowed to cry through a past life experience if you ever have a deep regression. Allow any of the emotions to just rise naturally to the surface because this is a natural part of the catharsis where the past life's healing magic will just sort of come by reconfronting the issue. And it gives you also the chance just to see that the old experience is no longer in effect, that you are now safe and you can simply bring forward the lessons and the pearls of wisdom right back to the surface. And that is so incredibly important when we work with past lives. Um, I will do a group angel card reading for all of us who are listening and know that if you are listening, Law of Attraction has brought you here for a reason. So part of this message will be for you. The cards that I'm working with today are the Goddess Guidance Oracle cards by Doreen Virtue. And I also have, so fun to work with for today, the Past Life Oracle cards by Doreen Virtue and Brian Weiss. Brian Weiss is a spiritual teacher and a PhD psychologist um, who teaches primarily about past lives. And I highly, highly recommend his books if you are interested in learning even more in depth on this fascinating topic. And today for our group reading, I'm going to pull simply one card from the past life oracle cards, just to kind of give us again, one of those little toe dip in the water messages about a theme, a lesson or an archetype, a symbol that we can kind of bring to the surface with regard to past life um, healings. And then from the goddess guidance oracle cards, I will pull just a couple more cards so that we can get kind of general guidance of where do we go from there? What do we do with that lesson? What do we do with that healing? So first we'll turn over our past life Oracle card. Oh, this is so interesting. I've been working with these cards for a little while and it's funny because I haven't seen this card come up before. This is the native American card, native American. I'm hearing a couple different messages from this particular card. One is that some of you who are listening have had past 
Native American lifetimes. I'm hearing that in these lifetimes, you learned a good deal spiritually, especially with regard to your relationship with the cycles of nature, with the earth. The other message that I'm hearing about this generally is just a very general broad sweep of the lessons that we can kind of learn right now through past life work are how to heal our relationship with nature and perhaps how to tap into our spiritual roots through practices such as shamanism which is a earth, which is which is an earth based spiritual modality helping us to discover spirituality through earth based things now very very interestingly i think this is such a cool synchronicity that the native american card came up and that message came up through this because when we do shamanic journey work it's actually quite similar to the kind of process that you do when you are doing a past life regression. When you do shamanic journey work, what you're doing is essentially kind of like an astral projection where you will go and explore the spiritual plane um, around you and learn more about yourself, connect with your guides, bring forward any healings or any lessons or messages that you need. Through past life work, it's the it's a very, very similar thing. You're projecting astrally. You're focusing on the spiritual plane or, or navigating it by way of the third eye and just sort of collecting knowledge. So I believe that this is a further sign essentially that says doing past life work or doing any kind of spiritual journeying work to delve deeper into what's there in your soul is a part of your life purpose. It's a part of something that will feed you, uplift you, and just guide you with the, with the, with the learning that you're doing now in your life. Very exciting. So let's turn over our two cards that we pulled from the goddesses deck. The first card that we have is the bold card with the goddess Freya. Bold. One of the messages actually that I'm hearing from this um, is that there is somebody listening who has a real strong past life connection to the uh, Norse, ancient Norse civilizations, and also to Norse spirituality, um, from which the goddess Freya comes from. So that uh, that is a message that's coming through right away. But then the other message coming through from this is that through doing the past life work, through doing any of the healing that you're working on right now, the lessons you're attracting in your life, what you're doing is achieving more assertiveness, decisiveness, confidence, strength, courage, or boldness in your life. When we overcome fears, it helps us, of course, with um, becoming more bold, becoming more strong, confident, assertive, and that sort of thing. So that's one of the big things. It feels like that's where maybe the uh, the heart of some of the uh, healing comes through, is through conquering any past fears and re- creating or re-accessing any of the courage um, or boldness from past life experiences. The second card that we got from the goddesses deck is the peace card. Peace. So the peace card is a card that tells us that through doing this work, again, the goal is peace. The goal is coming to a sense of oneness with God and with the universe and through restoring a a deep-seated sense of peace of mind. All right. So that was our group reading for today. So we will um, now discuss a part of past life, this past life topic that I think is um, really, really, really interesting. And this is actually believe it or not, the scientific side of this, there have been scientists who have done studies on um, scientific research on past lives. Um, one of the uh, professors who's done this, his name is Ian Stevenson from the University of Virginia, and he uh, actually wrote a book called 20 Cases Suggestive of Reincarnation. Stevenson spent over 40 years devoted to the study of children who have apparently spoken about a past life. And in each of these cases, he methodically documented the child's statements. Then he identified the deceased with whom the child was allegedly identified and verified the facts of the deceased person's life that matched the child's memory. 
He also, this is so fascinating, was able to match birthmarks or birth defects to wounds and scars that were on the deceased people, um, which were verified by medical records such as autopsies and photographs and things like that. Um, so there are just so many experiences where we can see this just as a very real life uh, kind of thing. One of the examples actually um, is a story of a boy in Beirut who spoke of being a 25-year-old mechanic thrown to his death from a speeding car on a beach road. According to multiple witnesses, the boy provided the name of the driver, the exact location of the crash, the names of the mechanic's sisters and parents and cousins and people he was with at the time, all of which turned out to match the life of a man who had died several years before the boy, boy was born and who had no apparent connection to the boy's family whatsoever. So there are many people sometimes that just walk in with their past life memories kind of already on the surface like that. And that's a little bit more rare, something that we can oftentimes see with children or particularly particularly see with children who have um, had lifetimes recently, you know, passed away in a, in a recent timeline and need to really deal with the healing now. But um, it's just it's just amazing to see. I am going to pull a couple of cards from our Goddess Guidance Oracle card deck and just see if there's any guidance um, that our angels have for you today. So the first card that I pulled for you is the guardian card with the, go the goddess Artemis. The guardian card is telling you that your situation is very closely being guided and watched over by your spirit guides. Um, you and your loved ones are absolutely safe right now. And any of the situations that you are thinking about, um, that you're holding dear, that you're, man you're looking to manifest new changes for, are really being protected and guided. I'm also hearing for you, the angels say, the words divine timing and to potentially slow down or be patient with the process. There's just this sense that everything is coming out in perfect timing. The results that you're looking for are being protected, guided, and are coming in exactly the timing that you need. Beautiful. I'm going to see uh, if we've got uh, another message coming from our guides on this. I'm just turning over the other card and here I see... The Boundaries card from Ishtar, the goddess Ishtar, um, the Boundaries card. This is a card that signifies um, that as you continue forward with the situation that you're in, there are more lessons um, to be learned. It feels as if your situation requires a clearing of any more of the things that have been going on around you. Um, love yourself in the situation enough to maybe say no to other people's demands on your time and energy, or even to create boundaries with yourself. I'm hearing a little bit of guidance that says sometimes there's a sense of self-pressuring or perfectionism. Sometimes we all have a streak of perfectionism in us. Um, but the guidance essentially says no need um, to be overly perfectionistic. You can sort of just um, let go and be um, a little bit more uh, fluid, patient with yourself, patient with the timeline of what's going on. Um, so yes, definitely, again, your situation is moving forward. It's being guided and guarded by the angels, but it will just take a little bit more learning and clearing of any of the old obstacles and can certainly be helped as you sort of put out um, put out boundaries. Now, I pulled one card for you, too, representing... Um, Something that has to do with past lives in this. Again, since our, our uh, connection today is with our, uh, our past lives. And from the past lives card, I pulled for you the spouse card. The spouse card. So this is a card that represents that you have a soulmate relationship in your life now that has um, – something to do with what you are doing in this in the, in the lesson that you have right now. So pay attention to any um any cycles, any issues going on in in relationships. Listen to other people's input in your current situation and know that your soulmate relationship um especially if there are any things going on typically with romantic relationships in the, in your life at this time that this is where some of that work is being done. This is where the guidance is being applied. Um so very very awesome. 
it looks as if we are going to be able to get the questions in from our producer. He says he's going to be able to type some of your questions in. Um, so I'm just going to connect with him and see if we can get a, a, a connection with one of our other callers because it looks as if we've had several people who tried to call in. Sorry, guys, but we weren't able to get the connection working today. So we're going to be a, a, little, a little unorthodox. And it looks like our next caller that we had on the air who called in is Maria. Maria, thank you so much for calling in today. And it looks like Maria's question um, was to get a past life reading done. All right. So exciting. So Maria, what we're going to do is pull just one card today from the past life oracle cards and just tune right into Archangel Raziel and see what he has to give you. Right away, I'm seeing a really strong spiritual energy around your past lives. I'm getting a feeling of going back into lifetimes in which you were a priestess or healer. And the card that I just turned over is the Atlantis card. Wow. So this is a card that represents that you had a connection with the ancient civilization that we now know as Atlantis. And it looks as if during this lifetime, you had a role that you played as a priestess, a spiritual leader and healer. I'm also hearing your angels say that you had a real connection with the water during this lifetime, sort of a magical, spiritual, loving um, heart connection with the ocean and with, with spirits of the ocean, a spiritual connection with the ocean. Um, so that is beautiful. Um, the angels are saying that any connection that you've ever felt um, to the water, to the ocean, is partly based in this deep spiritual connection and that spending time near water is really, really helpful for you. And connecting with your ancient roots and even in empowering you spiritually. So that's beautiful. Um, thank you so much for your question, Maria. I'm going to see if the angels have any last thoughts to kind of give us about your past lives today. I'm hearing Archangel Raziel just as a sort of um, final message on this saying that you have the ability to tap into some of the same um, healing abilities. And he's also saying psychic intuitive abilities that you held in Atlantis. And that as you do this, um, you will, uh, as you, you know, just seek to tap into them, you will start to remember and learn things. It's almost like getting right back on a bike and being able to ride it. Beautiful. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for your question, Maria. Um, all right. It looks like we have uh, several other callers who are on the air as well. Um, we will tune in to Mary. All right. So Mary submitted a question and her question was about job and finances. Mary said that she was working in a sales job and that it had been tough and she wanted to know if she'll be able to turn it around and how finances look coming up with the changes that she's doing. Um, all right. Thank you so much for your question, Mary. Let's go tune right into our goddesses, the goddess guidance oracle cards, and pull a card from this. So right away, I'm hearing the angels saying life purpose. And it's interesting because we still have Archangel Raziel front and center for our readings here today. And he's an angel that's also connected with our, our kind of eternal soul's life purpose. And he's saying that the job that you're in right now, the sales job, doesn't feel as if it's something that resonates with your life purpose any longer. He's giving you a message that says it's time to move on. And it looks as if you're being called to do something that really um, freeze your time. He's showing us a few different things. First, he's showing us that you have an ability with communicating and writing and that this can play a role in your work in the future. He is also showing us that traveling seems as if it's something that is meant to take um, a role in what you're going to be doing in your um, in your future um your future, your future job, your future career. So definitely keep that in mind. The freedom to travel, the freedom and to, to kind of use your talent in writing and communicating and really moving on. So he says that, Raziel says that now is the time to actually start 
taking some steps and moving forward. And particularly, I'm seeing him pointing to what look like writing samples or you just beginning to write about things that you feel passionate about and submitting them different places. He's saying that you have the ability to um, sort of get your toe in the water with what you want to do in your life um, by doing some freelance work too. So kind of look into that. See if there's anything that around, around you as far as opportunities in freelancing, again, writing, traveling, communicating, being a communicator is really, really where you're meant to be. So let's turn over our cards that we got for you today. Oh, we have the prosperity card is the first card we turned over for you, Mary. That's wonderful. Um, and I know that you had asked part of your question about finances. So this is your angel's way of telling you that things are absolutely looking up and that the universe is going to be supporting you in this life purpose career based change. So again, do not be afraid. Go forward and know that you are safe to make this change. The second card that we pulled for you is the receptivity card. The receptivity card is a card that says you are already attracting, ripe to attract opportunities, doing something that again reflects your soul's purpose, that gets you able to express your talent in communicating and writing, um, express where your your passions, you know, kind of truly lie, and again to be able to travel and things like that. Um, so Keep yourself open and begin to receive these opportunities by opening those doors when they appear in front of you or going out there and doing a little bit more proactive searching, talking to other people around you. I'm hearing the angels say that a lot of the times they, they um, send you their guidance or their signs, their help through other human beings. So the more you communicate with other people, the more you might find that you're stumbling upon the opportunities to do um, new work. So yes, you're in the middle of a transition. Um, and the final card is to be strong through that tr uh, transition, the be strong card of the goddess Sekhmet. Um, this is a card that wants you to know that you truly are stronger than you think and you do have the ability to set out on your own and take kind of an independent path with your career at this time. So let go of any of the fears um, you know, that may have been part of this and know that you are safe to go forward fearlessly. Wonderful. Segment be strong. Wow. All right. Thank you so much for your question, Mary. And it looks as if we have... One more. Oh, we have a few more pieces, uh, a few more questions. We'll try to fit them in. We have Georgia who called in and she was looking for some guidance on what she should do next. She um, had lots of interviews with new jobs in the past seven months and hasn't been able to land anything um, so far. So she is just looking for some guidance on what she could do next. And, uh, and and kind of growing in her career. So, wow, we have a little theme going on now. We're talking about some career changes. All right, Georgia. So I'm going to pull three cards from our Goddess Guidance Oracle card deck for you as well and see what the angels have to give us today. Turning over our first card, we have the Bright Future card from Lakshmi. And Lakshmi, I want you all to know, is also the goddess of abundance and finances, prosperity. Um, she is telling you essentially that there's no need to worry because it really does feel as if there is a job that has been handpicked for you um, from your guides, you know, kind of spiritually that matches you energetically that is on the way. It feels as if you won't have to wait too much longer. And in fact, um, I'm hearing the guidance three months that over the next three months, it feels as if there's going to be a big change that you might um, attract something new there. Um, the second card I pulled is the sensitivity card. Now, this is very, very interesting because our sensitivity card wants you to know that you really are, I think you already know this, I'm getting a gut feeling that you, you do, that you're becoming more and more sensitive um, to emotions, to environments, to relationships, situations, and even physically sensitive, um, you know, to foods and to chemicals or different things like that. Um, the sensitivity card is here to let you know that your work life, your career life is changing in 
direct correlation with this awakening sensitivity that you have. In other words, you are meant to be in a job, in a career that honors your sensitivity, not only by providing a gentle atmosphere that you can be comfortable in and thrive in, but also in providing an environment where you can use your gifts and sensitivity and let them shine. Because sensitivity truly is a gift. It means that you are tuned in to the emotion, the knowledge, and all the things that are kind of around you. And you have um, very unique insights on these things. So um, you are being led to the perfect job. And again, the angels are just saying divine timing. There's something about as we go into the warmer months that feels as if there are more um, jobs that are potentially opening in your particular field. So keep at it. There is something on the way. And our final card um, has a little bonus message for you on this. It's the Guiding Children card by Damara, Guiding Children. This is a card that wants you to know that you have a life purpose and a talent in helping, healing, guiding, or even parenting children. This is a big part of your your life's purpose. So this is something that is having an effect on what you'll be attracting as far as your career goes. And it's a, a card that also says to, to use your skills to focus on how your career, your life purpose might be able to impact future generations positively. Know that there's something about your next job that actually will um, give you give you a connection to that. So um, affecting future generations. What a, what a noble cause. That's beautiful. All right. It looks like we have time for another. It looks like we do a couple, just two more maybe that we'll be able to squeeze in here real quick. Um, we have Nick who called in and he just wanted to ask for some general information just to see what the cards would say about his past lives. All right, Nick, thank you for your question. Um, let's pull one card from the past life oracle cards and then just sort of see what the angels had to say, Oh boy, Nick. So right away, I'm so glad that you called in. You are one of those perfect examples of something that we were talking about before of those who have made um, vows in past lives to do something and that that vow is still affecting you in this lifetime. Now, what I'm seeing right away is a lifetime past in which it looks as if you were a devotee or an initiate in what looks to be a, an Eastern or Buddhist um kind of religion. It feels as if you are a monk of some kind. And it feels as if part of your um your lifestyle in this in this lifetime, which was so incredibly just full of spiritual energy, full of spiritual growth, was to go out on the streets and to literally have a begging bowl um, to sort of shun materialism and um, you know to have a lifetime where there is you know relative poverty going on for you. Um, the card that I pulled over for you is the food and hunger card, food and hunger. Specifically, what I'm hearing from this card is that, you know, there was this strong spiritual resonance that you once felt with, again, the nobility, uh, you know, the, the, the positiveness of what it was to sort of fast for long periods of time um, and to go without having luxuries and extra money and different things like that. And again, just to shun the material world so that you could have a focus um, more on the spiritual world. What I'm hearing Archangel Raziel saying is that you learned incredible things from this lifetime, which is why it still resonates in this one. It made a strong wave through the spiral of your lifetime sort of thing. Um, but that in this lifetime, you no longer need to necessarily always have this sense of, um, you know, ascetic uh, lifestyle where you're shunning materialism and um, all of that. So I'm hearing your angels say, let's release that vow of poverty and just go in and, you know, maybe even in, in your own meditation, just sort of say, angels, I'm ready to the release this, saying the affirmation to yourself. I now release and reverse any vows of poverty or lack that I ever made in any direction of time in my lifetimes. And I now choose a lifetime of easy flowing abundance. Thank you, angels. I choose abundance now. That is going to help you a lot. I'm hearing your angels saying, and I, I just find it so fascinating as well that this goes right back in with our theme, um, 
with the um when we were talking about abundance and prosperity with the other callers i i always just find it so uncanny the way that our callers um questions and some of the messages that come through seem to all have a connecting theme and what that really reflects guys is that um you know these these times that we share together when we when we do these readings are for everybody who's listening so even if you don't get through for a call um you are here for a reason and uh yeah you are you're receiving the messages that you need even if it's the answer to somebody else's question um so our final uh question that we will t- uh, take today is from angie and angie was wondering if there are any special messages for her um she says that she's having a hard time connecting with her spirit guides and also wonders about her financial situation gosh that's right along with our theme and is experiencing a, a, a just a challenging time in finances. She says, any advice is appreciated. Great. Thank you for your question, Angie. Um, so we're going to pull a couple of cards from the Goddess Guidance Oracle card deck for you. And then I'm going to pull one final card from the Past Life Oracle cards just to see what we get. All right. One, two, three. Here are these cards. The first card is the Boundaries card boundaries card. This is a really interesting card to come up, Angie. The first thing that I'm hearing about this is that um, it's important for you to begin to speak up and get strong and assertive in your job um, with regard to your financial situation. I'm hearing the angels say that when you put your foot down and demand from the universe, from life around you, and you know from your career, you know as a whole, to provide you with more money, that you will then attract it. Um, it really does feel like it's a force of will at this time, and the angels are saying that that's a direct. Um, there's a direct connection in that to being able to heal something they're saying that is um, deep in the soul's memories or soul's emotions um, with regard to receiving a relationship with lack. I'm actually going to skip forward to the uh, past life Oracle card that I just turned over because I think that it's so perhaps relevant to some of the experiences that you're having now. We have the imprisonment or slavery card, imprisonment or slavery card. Um, This is a card that's giving you a sign that somewhere in your past life experiences, there was what looks to be a traumatic event um, where you were not in control of what you got to choose to do with your life. And not, not only weren't in control of it, but weren't able to be properly compensated for what you were doing. There wasn't a, a sense of giving and receiving. Um, they're showing us that it looks as if you were a female in this lifetime. It looks as if it was an ancient lifetime back. I'm seeing images of what looked to be, I'm almost seeing like ancient Rome or Mediterranean, um, you know, kind of looking surroundings around this. Um, but they're just showing us that it's like there was just a great desire to do something very different with your lifetime and to escape what looked like uh, was a pattern of abuse um, and, you know, to lead your own life. The angels are saying that in this lifetime, if you can go to um, delve into that uh, that past life message just a little bit more, um, you know, through meditation, through prayer, and through asking the angels, please help me to release this and to heal this, then you will easily be able to clear this um, and begin to start to feel more balance. Another thing that they're actually adding to this too is a message for all of us. They want us to know that in order to heal something that began in a past life, you don't always have have to go back to the past life to heal it. You can heal it in this lifetime. That's why karma brings us repeated experiences of a feeling that we maybe had in the past. Um, So with any challenges or difficulties that you're seeing now, the angels are saying that the, the truth and the power in this, the healing in this is to step back into your power just to demand, I must direct my own life. I'm making the choice. I'm putting my foot down. I'm taking my power back. This is all about me now. I I choose to be compensated properly and to receive in this lifetime. Um, the other card that we had pulled from the goddesses card from this is the start delegating card too, which is a big card that tells you that you don't need to take on everybody else's stuff either. They're saying that every once in a while um, you'll take on 
um, you know, favors or just energies and things like that from other people. And they're saying that there's been an imbalance between giving and receiving, where you've been giving far more than you've been receiving in your life. So as you delegate or as you set boundaries, step back, um, you know, in relationships that are imbalanced like this, even if they are professional ones, even if it involves things that will go forward with your job, um, that that will that will also really, really, really just help. The angels are saying that your time and your energy and your resources deserve to be respected because the more that you respect your t- your uh, your time and your energy or demand that other people do, the more available you are to let your gifts shine out into the world and to be a bigger help in this world. So uh, thank you so much, Angie, for your question. All right, guys. Wow. What a a fun whirlwind, exciting episode we had today. Um, We talked about a very, very exciting topic and I loved all the questions that you guys um, gave to us. And again, thanks so much for being patient and bearing with us through some of the little technical blips that we had today. Um, So remember now that I'll be live every third Thursday of the month at 1230 p.m. Eastern on Project Bring Me to Life continuing to bring you spiritual messages and angel thoughts. And you can tune in every Thursday at this time to hear the rebroadcast of our past shows. Next month, our show topic will be alchemy. We are having a very metaphysical spring on Through the Eyes of the Angels. So definitely mark your calendars for April 20th at 1230 p.m. Eastern and check out our episode on alchemy. All of the shows are recorded and available to listen to as podcasts on iTunes at Spreaker.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. And on the app for Android Stitcher, that's S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R. I will also be posting the links for the podcast on my Facebook and Twitter pages in case you missed it. So you can like my Facebook page at facebook.com slash Sarah Hall 1111, or you can follow me on Twitter by visiting twitter.com slash Seraphim 444. That's S-E-R-R-A-P-H-I-M 444. And as always, if you'd like to contact me for a reading, spiritual guidance, or past life healing session, you can visit my website at www.seraphim.com. That's S-E-R-R-A-P-H-I-M dot com for more info. And as always, for more fantastic spiritual talk radio, music, art, podcasts, events, and so much more, stay tuned to the Project Bring Me to Life Network and visit www.projectbringmetolife.com. I love you all so much. Know until we meet again that you are so loved and so very blessed. Bye, guys. <laughs>